Hey guys, I'm Drew up here and welcome to our 10th video in our Let's Learn Java series. And today we're going to be making a, a game, our first game, and it's going to be a number guessing game. This is a, kind of a standard uh, game you learn when you're learning how to program because it kind of puts everything together, if statements, while loops, uh, we're getting input from our scanner, all that. So let's get rid of this switch statement, we're not going to need it. So, when you're thinking of making an actual program, one thing that's useful is called pseudocode. It's where you think of what you're going to program before you program it. That's usually a good idea to do. So, we're going to type it out. So what do we want to do, right? We're going to say hello, right? We're going to write introduction. So what, what are we doing? We're doing a number guessing game. So what is it going to do is we're going to ask her, we're going to pick a number at random, and then we're going to ask the user to guess what the number is. And then we're going to tell them if they're high or low. Okay, and then we'll keep we'll keep asking them until they get the number correct. Right, and we're gonna do a number between one and a hundred. Do that. Okay, so we're gonna do an introduction, and then we're gonna pick a number, a random number, between one and a hundred. Right, uh, inclusive. Right, you want to include those. We are then going to ask the user for their input. Well, guess I guess we'll say. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then we're going to check if it is the right number or if it is high or low. We'll tell the user. It tell the user. I guess we'll just tell the user if it's high or low. I'm not going to ramp it back out now. And then uh, repeat until. The correct number is found. And then we will congratulate them on winning. Too late on. Okay. So that is the basis of our program. Now let's get a code in. So let's do an introduction, right? So I'm going to say system.l.printline. Let's say, welcome to the number. Yes, sir. Game. That's a that's a great name for a game. Right? Just run that out. That print line. Try and guess the number between one and one. All right. Now let's go down to uh, pick a random number. So I'm gonna say like system that out that print line. Picking a random number now. All right, and let's pick a number. How do you get a random number? Now that's that's a good question. Now there is a function, right? A math. There is a Java math uh, class that is inherent to all Java classes. You don't have to import this class, right? We imported Scanner. We do not have to import. The math class, right? Just like we didn't have to imprint a string, we don't have to imprint math, uh, import math. So, how can we get a random number? Well, math has a dot random function, right? Now, this function though provides you a random number between zero and one. It's a it's a double. So it's from it'd be zero point zero point one or zero point five, in any number between zero and one. All right. So we can take that, right? I'm going to put, take an int, and I'm going to say, uh, let's store this as a correct, as a, I guess, a, I'm going to call it random number. That's going to be a random number. And I'm going to set it equal. Let's add some spaces here. This is a, let's add some spaces here, just so we can uh, see this more clearly. Right, so we got our int random number. And I'm going to set this equal to math.random. Well, this is a decimal, right? A decimal, it's a double. This is an integer that's not going to work so we need to int it now here's the problem here is if we int this what happens when you take an int of a double is it will take off the decimal and leave only the front and the front is always going to be zero so it's just going to give us zero now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to multiply it by 100. now what this will do is this will give us a number between zero and 99 because this is never going to be one so it's never going to be a hundred. 
it'll be 0 to 99. Now, what I can do is add 1 to this, and now we get uh, 1 to 100. Does that make sense? All right, it's basic you know, math. We're taking a number, uh, a decimal between, uh, that's not 0, well actually it could be 0, it's between 0 and 1, but never 1. Does that make sense? So when we multiply it by 100, we get 0 to 99, and then by adding 1, we get 1 to 100. Now we're going to store that as our random number, that is our chosen number. I'm going to say system.out.println number chosen. Okay, so we chose our number. Now we're going to ask the user for a guess, right? I'm going to put it under here. Let's see, ask the user for a guess. So I'm going to say system.out.println. Actually, I'm going to make this a print. I'm going to say, please input your guess. Okay. We're going to add that. Now I need to get input from the user. So we're going to go to scanner here. And actually, I'm going to go above this here. Go above it. I'm going to make a new scanner object. I'm going to call it input equals new scanner, right? Like from our scanner video. And I'm going to say system.in. So I'm going to get scanner input from our system in. Okay? All right. Now I need to get their guess. So I'm going to say int guess is equal you input that next int, right? We're just going to straight up just ask him for the next int. Now the user could input like D, and this will give us an error. We're not going to do error handling just yet. That's more of an intermediate topic, and we'll probably get to that once we get to Java Intermediate. For right now, we're just going to hope that they actually enter in a number, because if they don't, it'll crash the program. Okay? So we have our guess, right? Now we need to do our check. Right, let's check it if it's the right number, right? So let's uh, go down here to our next uh, comment. I'm gonna say if guess is equal to random number, right? We wanna do something. How do we say if we win? Now I'm going to have a boolean that says that we won, right? It's gonna be true or false. So I'm gonna go back up here to, uh, go up here above our public static void main. And I'm gonna make a private boolean up here, and I'm going to call it win. Okay, let's call it game over. And I'm going to set this to false. And as long as game over is false, we haven't won. But when game over becomes true, we win. Right? So if we guess it right, we're going to say game over equals true. That's what's going to happen if we win. Right? It's false now, but we're going to set it to true for now. If we, if we, if we guess the correct number. Right? Now we got to tell the user, right, if we, uh, Guess the number wrong, right? So let's say let's have an else. If, right? What if our guess is less than our random number, right? I'm gonna say system dot out that print line. Your guess, your yeah, your guess is too low. Exclamation point. I'm gonna copy this and do the same thing. Do an else if, if our guess is greater than our random number, then your guess is too high, right? So we, they entered in a number too high, we'll tell them, they entered in a number too low, we tell them, but if they enter it in correctly, we win. Now we need to repeat this until the correct number is found, right? So we're going to need to loop. What, what loop will work the best? Well, because I'm using this uh, Boolean variable as our exit, we can use a while loop. Right? So I'm actually going to put this into a while loop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the very beginning of our system that out print line. I'm going to put a while loop here. And I'm going to put game over. The while game over. But this is testing if it's true. Okay? Which it's set to false by default. So this will not actually activate. So what I have to do is put an exclamation point before it. Now remember how this is equal to, this is is not equal to right if i do that that makes this is not equal to, right same thing here this exclamation point says the reverse so it'll take if this is true the exclamation point makes it false if this is false the exclamation point makes this true all right it takes the inverse of the truth of it and it makes sense 
So right now it's false, but because I put an exclamation point in front of it, this now makes this statement true, right? So this will activate. And I'm gonna put all of this into one big old uh, brackets, which this looks bad. So now we need to add our tab spacing, make it look all nice and neat and dandy. You wanna make sure your code looks good. It's important for readability. So now we have a while loop here that will keep asking for an input, right? And it'll check it. And it will keep doing this until our game over becomes true. Once this becomes true, this will become true, right? But because we have this exclamation point into it, it'll make the whole statement false. And since our while loop is false, it will exit the while loop, right? I'm going to get rid of our repeat here, and now we're going to congratulate them for winning. Because if we are out of the while loop, the user inputted the correct number, and we won. So I'm going to say system that out. Print line. Congratulation. I feel like I'm spelling this wrong every time I type it. I swear. Congratulation. You guessed the right number. And then I'm actually going to tell them what the number is by adding plus random number. Just, just cause. All right. And that will do it for our actual game. Now we could add in another thing here. We could add in a second while loop and ask them if they want to play again, which will then loop back up here to the top and then they can play again. But we're not going to go that deep. We just want to play one game of it. So this should work. Now if I save this, right, I'm going to compile. Do we get any errors? We have an error. Oh yes. Remember, <laughs> this is a static method. So this Boolean has to be static as well because it's outside of the method. Actually, I'm going to just move it inside of our method because uh, that works just as well. I'm going to put it here at the top and I'm just going to put a private Boolean uh, game over equals false. Now it doesn't have to be static because it's within our method. I'm going to hit compile. Private. Oh, yeah. Can't do that. Since it's inside of a method, there is no visibility statement. Because it's already private, it's only visible inside of this uh, method, right? So if I compile it, and then I run it. All right, welcome to the number guessing game. Try and guess a number between one and 100. Picking a random number now, number chosen. Please input your guess. All right, let's guess five. Your guess is too low. It's again, uh, 50, too high, uh, 25. Jeez, I got it right first time. <laughs> That was pretty good. So, congratulations, you guessed the right number, 25. And we can play this as many times as we want. See, if I guess 25 again, it's not that number, because our number is random, but our guess is too low. Let's try 75. 50? Too low, 60. Too high, 55. Boom, got it. Just like that. All right, so we have made our very first game. Now I'm gonna show you an advanced trick, right? This is technically advanced, even though we're in the beginners. I'm going to show you an advanced trick. We're going to make this game run nice and smooth, kind of. So, like, so the problem with the game right now is when we run it, it just does everything instantly. But that's not very, like, nice. Like, you can't, it doesn't give you any time to read it. It just prints out this, and this, and then this, and then that. And it just prints it all out real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a private static void. I'm going to call it pause. I'm going to put in an int um, milliseconds. That comes. So what we can do is we can actually pause our program, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a thread. It's called thread, and I'm going to call it the sleep. Oop. Let's call it sleep. Oh, gee. And I'm going to call it the sleep for our milliseconds, right? So we're going to have have the whole program sleep for a couple milliseconds now this doesn't work on its own it can cause errors so the problem is is we have to catch those errors and how we catch errors is with what's called a try catch statement now try catch statements are rather advanced but you write them just like this so we're going to try this code right we're going to try to run this line of code now it could have a problem if it has a problem we're going to catch it 
But what kind of problem can it have? We're just going to call it an exception. And I'm going to call the exception E. Right? And then inside of our catch block, we can do something about the error if an error happens. But I'm not going to do anything about the error. I'm just going to let it sit there. Which you don't have to do anything about it. But we're just going to leave it like this. So we're going to try and make our program stop working for a couple milliseconds. And then uh, continue on. So what we can do here is after our thing here, we can say pause. And I want it to pause for a whole second. <coughs> I want to pause for a whole second, and one second in milliseconds is a thousand milliseconds. So we're going to pause for a second, and then we're going to come down here, and I'm going to pause again. And then we're going to pick our number, right? And I'm going to pause for another second, and then our number will be chosen. And I'm going to pause again for another second. So if we start this, compile it, right, and we run it. We get welcome to the number guess the game. Try and guess your number between 1 and 100. And it all comes up rather slow. You can use this to have some kind of effect. So like you picking a random number now, it pauses. And then let's say like a system that out the print line. Three. Two. One, right? We'll have it say like three, two, one. And we'll have it pause for a second in between each of them. Right, so I'm going to pause for a second. So now, when we run it, it makes it a nice little, like, kind of animated. Oop, illegal argument. Oh, <laughs> these need to be strings. Can't just type that in. My bad. There we go. So now I'm going to print these out, and it's going to have a nice little effect with it. All right. File, and we'll run it. Go to number guess game, try and guess the number between 100. Pick a random number now. Three, two, one. Number chosen. Please input your guess. So it, it kind of makes the game flow better. You know, it doesn't just give you everything at once. We pause the program for a whole second. And you could do longer than a second. You can make these more than a thousand, less than a thousand. Depends on what you want uh, the thread to sleep. So yeah. We made our first game, and I covered a rather advanced topic, which we'll be seeing this come up more as we do more advanced things where errors are bound to happen. So, yeah. I think that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe, and thanks for watching.